Merry Christmas, everyone. This is the first Christmas Eve service, by the way, where there's plenty of seats in the house. But I know you brought your own seats from home, so we're good. Glad you could be with us this Christmas Eve. Uh, the bulletin, the order of worship for today, is available both in the, mess- in the comment section in Facebook and as an attachment in the email reminder that was sent to you over the weekend. Uh, everything we need to know for worship is in that bulletin. Uh, So we join together in worship now. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. For unto us a child is given, unto us a Savior is born. For those walking in darkness, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting hope. For those living in fear and dread, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting peace. For those living in hopelessness and despair, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting joy. For those living in loneliness, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. Gracious God, today as we gather together to conclude our Advent journey, we celebrate that a new light has dawned. A child is born, and that child is our light and the source of our joy. He brings hope into the world and the promise of peace on earth. He is love incarnate, love divine. And we thank you, dear Lord, for this, the most perfect gift imaginable. Joy to the world. Christ is born. Amen. Amen. Our Lord and hope, we know that we often fail you. We forget to watch. We forget to wait. We neglect to focus our hearts on you and instead want for ourselves. Help us to remember that we are called to be beacons of your light in the darkness around us and that you have given us what we need to serve you, the grace of your Son, the one who came to heal, liberate, and share the good news of your faithful love. Amen. With the coming of Christ, Our lives are forever changed, and we are transformed by his model of living and his message. By Christ's death, we are forgiven and set free from the bondage of sin so that God can work through us. May the light light of of Christ Christ continue continue to to break break into the the darkness darkness of this world.
The first reading is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second reading is from Titus, the second chapter, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here ends the readings. Our Gospel this day is the Gospel according to St. Luke in the, in the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered along with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in the region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those to whom he favors. But when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Eve. You will notice on the Advent wreath that all four candles on the outside are lit and the center candle, the Christ candle, is also lit. That candle is lit to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world, that he came amidst the darkness to bring light. Now I bring this up because Christmas is very exciting. You can see behind me that our Christmas tree is decorated and is all set and has been for a few weeks. I even have presents wrapped and sitting underneath the tree. We can be easily distracted by the tinsel and the lights and the presents, not to mention all the great special food, especially Christmas cookies and candy canes and as great and wonderful as that all is and fun to celebrate, we celebrate because of Jesus' birth. We celebrate the Savior being born and coming into this world as a baby to grow into a man who would later die on the cross and to save us from our sins. We are so blessed to be able to celebrate Christmas, even if it is a little bit different this year, even if it seems a little bit weird, we are blessed to be able to celebrate the birth of Jesus. It is my hope and my prayer that you and your family can find some quiet time to read together Luke chapter two, which is the story of Jesus's birth. Sing away in the manger or happy birthday. All are great ways to remember and keep Jesus in the center of our Christmas. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the best gift of all. And it is not wrapped and put underneath the Christmas tree. It is the gift of Jesus. Help us to remember that he is with us all year long and not just at Christmas. And that you walk alongside us every day. So bless us and watch over us and keep us safe. And all of God's people said, Amen. Merry Christmas, my friends. Well, what are you giving for Christmas? Now, I know that's not the question we usually hear people ask, right? Most often we hear people say, what are you getting for Christmas? Now, we know what re-gifting is, don't you? Yeah. It's what we do when we get a gift that we pass along to somebody else. It's usually because it's something we might already have a couple of or something we don't need or maybe not want. This year, Sandy in our office gave me this as a Christmas present. It is, no kidding, a three-pound chocolate bar. And she said, now, you'll notice I didn't put your name on there so you can re-gift it if you want. Ha! Ha! I am not re-gifting this. I would stand on my head all day for chocolate. The re-gifting that we're called into is not about giving, giving or passing along something we don't want. Instead, it is passing along a gift that is so tremendous and so meaningful, so good that we want to share it with others. One of my daughters began fishing again in vigor in her 30s. It's been a while, but when they were little, we'd go fishing all the time. Now, when I go fishing, there's a particular lure I use. For those who care, it's a gold jigging spoon. I call it my one lure. It catches just about everything. Now, this particular lure has been pretty hard to find for the last 10 years or so, but the other day I came across some, and I was so excited, I got half a dozen of them and I sent them to my daughter, and when they arrived, right away she called me. She said, Dad, this is so cool. Thank you. Now, I did not send her the lures I don't like. I sent her the ones I like the most, the ones I think are best. That is the kind of re-gifting I'm talking about. It's what Jesus calls us into. To pass on the gift, the joy and the peace that we experience and passing it on to others because it means so much to us. 
Now we know that our short-sighted world just doesn't get it. It does not understand what God has done in Jesus. So it reduces God's gift to a superficial holiday where we're tempted to settle for a cheap imitation of Christmas. You know, decorations, pretty boxes, all the glitz and glitter. All of it that crowds Jesus out of the manger. It's all manger and fluffy sheep, but no Jesus, who challenges us to leave the ways of the world and its materialism behind with his greed, greed and hate and me first attitude. It's almost like a department store ad with the perfect tree and all sorts of beautifully wrapped gifts under it. But what they don't tell us is the gifts in that ad, the boxes are all empty. There's no there there. It's just appearance. God gave us Jesus for Christmas. So what are you giving for Christmas? Are you going to be a re-gifter? Uh, we can complain all we want about the materialism of Christmas, how the celebration of this day has become a cheap imitation, almost an insult, but our complaints don't change a thing. But what we can do is we can change what we choose to do. We can change our focus from getting gifts to re-gifting, to being the gift. See, Christmas is not the end of the story in God's work in this world. It is only a beginning. Now, Luke, in that beautiful story we heard today, Luke is clear. He describes Jesus, a babe, wrapped in strips of cloth and laid in a manger. And did you hear what he said? He said, this will be a sign for you. It's not the whole story. It's not the end of the story. It's not even the middle of the story. It's the beginning of the story. Jesus' birth is only a start, a sign that God is doing something new in this living, breathing incarnation of God's promise. You know, Mark's gospel begins with these words. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark doesn't have a Christmas story. Instead, Mark starts with an adult Jesus whose first words in Mark's gospel are repent because the kingdom of God has come near to you. It is not a place. This kingdom of God is not merely heaven when we die, but it is the reign of God that is defined not by borders, but God's ruling that lives in us and comes into the world again and again through you and me. It is an era of peace and hope, forgiveness and love that removes our guilt and our fear. John's Gospel begins by recalling the very first words of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. In the beginning... And by using those words, John implies that in Jesus, God is bringing in a brand new creation. God tells us Jesus is the light that has come into the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. Our world can use some light right now, don't you think? Not just bright, shiny things that pretend to be important, but the light, the real light. This is God's gift. Light for the darkness. The kingdom of God, when the kingdom of our world or our own kingdoms don't deliver what we need and fall flat. The beginning of a new time, a new era of peace and healing and mercy and compassion and new life. It is time to re-gift, friends to stop getting gifts, and time to start being the gift. See, the way of Jesus is all about sacrifice and self-denial, loving others and putting the interests of others ahead of our own. That, as you know, is why the world thinks we are nuts and why so many have tried to redefine the path of Jesus 
to a self-focused, what do I get for myself mentality. See, our materialistic world assumes that the end point is what do I get. That's a common, normal thing. But it is not the way of Jesus. In the early Christian church, the first couple of hundred years after Jesus, Christians were the ones who took care of the sick and the dying, the widows and orphans who were thrown away. It was a time when unwanted babies were thrown in the dump. Christians would take them in and care for them and raise them. The early Christians, they took Jesus seriously. They fed the hungry, they gave clothes to the naked, and they cared for those in need. And this was in a time when mercy and compassion were considered a weakness. They did not jump onto the train of the rich and powerful and ask what's in it for me. They didn't beg God for something new for themselves. No, they took Jesus' words seriously and they lived them. The early Christians made it their business to be the gift by re-gifting God's love for them. In our time, Jesus sends us to re-gift him right now and today. I mean, let's not forget, Christian is a name that means little Christ. That is who you are. That is who we are. We little Christs. So Jesus tells us, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. Suffer with me. Care for the weak and the poor. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Forgive those who hurt you. Pray for those who persecute you. Return no one evil for evil. But this is not just an exercise in good deed doing. No, Jesus comes to us first with a promise of forgiveness and freedom from fear and guilt for all the ways we have hurt others and ourselves. Jesus removes the distance that our fear and busyness and indifference is put between God and us. Following Jesus is not a choice between faith or actions of love and mercy. It is both. Following Jesus is being freed from the shallow, temporary, two-dimensional ways of this materialistic, selfish world with its guilt and fear and it is caring for the weak, the hungry, the homeless, the least, the lost, and the last. I keep hearing you get this. I want you to know that some of our kids, our teens in this congregation, for years and years have made lunches for homeless men at guest house. And this year under COVID, they've not been able to gather to do that. And they're asking, what can we do? How can we still care for them? Yeah. The world might think we're nuts. But that is the way of Jesus. That is giving the gift. That is being the gift. That is re-gifting. And Jesus said, when we care for the least and the lost and the last, we care for him. And that is what God is beginning in the birth of Jesus. So this is not just some story from a long time ago. It is God beginning a new creation in you and in the world today. Christmas is not just one day. It's a new beginning. The gift we need. Not something we put under a tree and then store on a shelf, but a beginning of new life for us. And God trusts us. God commissions us to re-gift to carry this gift into the world. You remember, Jesus did not just come into the world once. He comes again and again and again to you, for you, in you, and through you. Christ is born. May Christ be born again anew in you. God has come in Christ.
And Christ in you, you little Christ, God comes into this world now again in you. Be the gift. Merry Christmas. Let us join together in professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, Emmanuel, come to us again. Come to us in new ways and break into our lives and cast out the darkness. Fill us with the power of your promise and lead us on our path in this world and fill us with your peace to strengthen us to meet all the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of life and healing and hope, we have frankly never been so relieved to see a year pass into a new one. After this year, we give you thanks for the hopeful news of vaccines for COVID. And as we wait, we ask that you grant us wisdom, endurance, and the ability to wait, to remain careful and cautious. And as we wait, wait with us, Grant us the ability to live with uncertainty for a little while longer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who has come to us in Jesus, we give you thanks for sending us the gift we need. Stir up your power in us that we might become re-gifters, sharing the joy, peace, and hope that comes to us in Jesus. And grant us the ability to not try to hoard your gift for ourselves, but to share your love and mercy into this world so that all people would know beyond a doubt that you have come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we commend to you the many members of our congregation and others we know who have been infected with COVID. 
We lift up those who wait on you as they live with illness and wait for recovery. Remember this day, Claire Murky and Ken Wentland, Catherine Haberman and Bob Willey, Scott Willey and Cheryl Keller, Vi Medhurst, Sue Jarman, Jim Madursky, and all those we name to you now. Stay with them, Lord. Hold them closely. Hear their prayers and ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the time when we normally get to uh, give our offerings for God's work in this world through this church. So you may do so by using the donate button on the website or following the handy text to give instructions in our bulletin. You can mail them in like many folks do as we present them today in worship. Or you can also uh, register for direct deposit. All you need to do to do that is uh, contact our church office.
Let us pray. O God, all that we have first comes from you. We give to you with grateful hearts. Use these gifts and all that we are to proclaim your love for all people. Amen. Gathered together as the people of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.